हेलो एवरी वन एंड वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सर्वर ज्ञान माई नेम इज डॉक्टर लोकेंद्र सिंह एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दैट वॉट हैपन्स वैन वी चेंज स्टोरेज क्लास ऑफ एनी एस थ्री बकेट ऑब्जेक्ट सो यूजली पीपल आस्क मी दैट वैन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एस थ्री लाइफ साइकिल मैनेजर इट मीन्स वी आर गोइंग टू ऑटोमेटिकली चेंज द क्लास ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट विद इन एस थ्री सो वॉट हैपन्स if we change the class from one to another so where we are going to find the files there was a question recently i have faced let us say that we have modified the storage class to deep archive so where i'm going to find the file so right so guys uh, that is very easy and uh, very very easy to implement and easy to restore the files easy to download the file easy to retrieve the file so that is very easy so now let us uh, go through this particular video straight forward but before that guys i would like to request if you are new to my channel so please do like share and subscribe to my channel share it with your friends as well who are in need to learn cloud computing right okay now let us say there are multiple files here this particular file you as you can see this is a pdf file when it is created size and the particular storage class right so now what if i select this particular file and i go to action section so i can uh, like always download i can calculate data size and like other options are here so in the same other options like either i can like rename object and other options are av are available here so there is a particular section edit storage class so guys as soon as i i edit storage class there are multiple options available here first of all like standard guys before planning for storage class change we need to keep this thing in mind like how and why we are going to create it right first of all we should know that this is going to be standard storage class by default whenever we upload an object to s3 that storage is standard storage right the storage class is going to be standard storage class frequent like uh, this type of class is designed for frequently accessed data the data will be lying between like like uh, equal to less than like uh, equal to greater than 3 availability zone there is no minimum duration you can keep your storage here even for a day or two minimum billable object size that is not a mandatory here it can be 1 byte to like 1 terabyte right retrieval fees is nil same thing intelligent tiering so when you want to have like long lived data but the particular access pattern is not known to you so you can keep that here obviously like minimum duration is going to be 30 days there is a restriction here like per object fee applies like monitoring and auto tiering fees so let us say if there is an object this month you did not like access that object maybe even a single time and the very next day next month we are going to uh, like access that object maybe 1000 times right so intelligent tiering will keep on changing the storage class based on the requirement now next is standard ia long lived infrequent access data standard ia means infrequent access right then after over here there are some sort of restriction that minimum book, minimum object size has to be 128 kb and whenever you are going to retrieve so per gb fees will be applied over here like within intelligent tiering and standard there are no retrieval fees but yes uh, going forward you will have to pay the retrieval fees as well then we have one zone ia if the particular non critical data you have and obviously like you want to have the like data available in long duration maybe for a year or two then you can opt this particular storage class here and definitely minimum number of days should be 30 but in this case as you see like uh, one more thing here like non critical data availability zone is going to be one only over here like greater than or 3 3 is there but over here we are going to be it is going to be only one availability zone number of days are going to be 90 now glacier so when you talk about like long term data archiving with retrieval times ranging from minutes to hours so let us say you have modified the storage class uh, from this to like standard to glacier so when you will go to retrieve data so it might take maybe minutes or maybe hours up to couple of hours it can take when we talk about deep archival so like uh, most of things are going to remain uh, like change here like what so storage class is going to be modified in comparison to once on ie number of days are going to be 180 once you like change storage class to uh, deep archive glacier so obviously guys you will not be allowed to change the storage class before 180 days right per gb fees will be applied here finally we have reduced redundancy storage so obviously like frequent access frequently accessed and non critical data right so that sort of data if you have so definitely we can store our data within this standard within this type of storage class as well 
now let us say how do we see that whether is the other class is changed so guys we are going to see we are going to do one thing we are going to select a new storage class earlier it is on a standard and, and, and i'm gonna save it so guys as soon as i save right i'll go once again back to my uh, like s3 file i'll go to my s3 bucket i will have to check whether the like storage class so that is going to be intelligent tearing but guys main thing here is like if you select this so obviously guys during action there is a particular folder like download as so you will be allowed to download this particular folder as soon as it is available as soon as you want you can download this but what if the storage class is changed to glacier what if storage class is changed to glacier so what i can do here is i can edit the storage class once again i'll go here and i will modify it to glacier now let us see what happens so guys if i hit save here I'll close it. I'll once again go back. So now, guys, like the, this object is stored in Glacier storage class. In order to access it, must first you must first restore it. So why? What I'm going to do here is so let us go back once again. Now it is in Glacier. I'll select this particular object. So before downloading this object, I will not be allowed to op like download this object by default. But yes, guys, before restoring this object, guys, I'll have to initiate restore. Like number of days, like number of days that the re like restored copy is available. So I can define it like 11 days and in any like uh, any standard. Like typically retrieval, typical within like 5 to 12 hours. A standard retrieval is going to be 3 to 5 hours. And expected, expedited uh, retrieval is going to be 1 to 5 minutes. When retrieving less than 125 MB of data. So over here I can expedite it. And obviously I'll have to pay some extra, uh, some extra stuff for it. So I'll uh, like initiate restore, like successful restore request done. I'll go back. I'll go back to this particular storage class. If you see here glacier, so after some time it will be like restored and I shall be able to download my object. As soon as I click here, so obviously after some time this particular link will be available for me to download the copy. But guys main thing here is, so let us say if I talk about any object here, if I'm going to modify the object class, then we need to understand this thing. So right now we are going to keep it like under like deep archive glacier. I'm going to save this particular storage class. So you will see the difference here. As soon as we select the bucket. So obviously this is going to be deep archive glacier and this is going to be glacier. And moreover, like if you see it here, so multiple files are available. And these are not on standard storage. So guys, we need not to worry about that where we are going to find the files, how we are going to initiate the storage restore of this particular data so we can easily uh, like restore data from the same console from the same s3 console but that is going to like that will be required that will require you guys to restore data to initiate restoration before uh, you can access that actual data right so these are the things which you will have to perform in order to access your data from s3 so i hope guys this information has been informative if you want to know anything else related to s3 so please do let me know i will be there to help you thank you so very much Happy learning, have a good time. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel.